Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS in Ellen Wake 2. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphic setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have a, an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have uh, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's gonna make sure that it optimize your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divided by two, so for me it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically and you just lower the software like that and you're gonna make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software and also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes two percent, ten percent boost in your FPS depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. So inside of the game, so display mode, you have a couple of options over there. I recommend full screen. This is the best way to have the most of your FPS. I didn't have any issue with borderless, honestly. No stutter and stuff like that. But I was like sometime one or two FPS down over my full screen. So let's go with full screen for the display mode. Make sure in display resolution that you're playing native. So 1080p if you have a 1080p monitor. A 4K if you have a 4K monitor. For the res render resolution, if you don't use any DLSS or FSR, I recommend, again, just use the same resolution that you're playing with it. Uh, but if you have an RTX card, so you have the DLSS option, my recommendation is go with quality mode, balance performance and ultra performance. Honestly, in many games, they always look very blurry when you're moving. So my recommendation is go with quality. And it's pretty much the same thing with FSR2, go with quality. Both are really good. You're going to gain a, a nice 15% boost in your FPS with the LSS and FSR. So it's pretty huge. Also, if you have an RTX card 4000 series frame generation, this is the, the magic button over there. Use it because if you want to use ray tracing, it will help you a lot because normally you can get 30 to 40% boost in your FPS with the frame generation. So that's pretty amazing. I don't remember the name from the one from Radiant that they just just came out, but uh, right now it's not available, but I'm pretty sure they're going to do an update to make sure that you can run the new uh, frame generation for Radiant. So if you have an RTX card, go with it. Motion blur, I uncheck. I don't like this effect in any game. Uh, film grain, a bit weird. Normally, I don't use that, but on my Radiant card, when I uncheck it, I was losing FPS. I was losing 2 FPS, so I was running the game, I think, at 49 FPS. And uh, when I uncheck the film grain, I went to 47. So, a bit weird over there. So, maybe do some testing, but I didn't see this behavior on my 4090, my NVIDIA card. After that, post-process quality, I recommend to go with low over there. You're going to gain a nice 3% boost. Uh, texture resolution, go with ultra and high if you have 8 gig of more and more of VRAM. If you have 6 gig, go high and medium. If you have 4 gig, medium, medium. And less than 4 gig, go with low. Volumetric lighting and spot quality, uh, quality spotlight, sorry, quality. I recommend to go with medium over there. You're going to gain 2 to 3% for high to medium. But just one person with low. It's a bit weird in this game. All those low parameter, they don't provide a lot of FPS. Uh, so you're gonna see me uh, showing a lot of medium one because also you want you know you want the immersion, you want the, the visual quality. Even if you run everything at low, by the way, the game looks very nice. So probably that's why you're not getting a lot of FPS at low. And uh, global illumination quality. Also, I recommend to go with medium over there. You're gonna gain a nice three percent. Shadow, uh, this is the part that you're, go you're gonna gain a lot of FPS. So shadow resolution, shadow filtering, shadow detail, low, medium, medium. You're gonna provide you a nice 7% boost in FPS. Um, 
if you don't like the way shadow looks at low can definitely run at medium you're gonna lose two percent over there so it's a question of preference uh, again it's a, it's a game that you want a nice immersion so question of preference uh ambient inclusion you have it if you want to check it you can gain three to four percent that's a lot but honestly the game looks very flat without it so i don't recommend to uncheck this global reflection and screen space reflection go with low if you're playing like you're very limit with your uh computer and this game and you feel like you're dropping like crazy uh your fps go with off with both of them they're gonna stabilize a lot your fps uh, if not just go with low Fog quality, I recommend to go with medium. You're going to get a nice 3% boost over there. Terrain quality, go with high. Not a huge impact. Uh, far object detail, go with medium. Pretty huge impact with this one. Uh, if, honestly, when you run it at high, it tanks a lot your uh, performance. Scatter rate, object density, I recommend to go with medium. Uh, it's... it's it's like 2% for each bracket, so you're going to gain a nice 4%, but I don't think low is worth it to, to run. So my recommendation is go with medium. After that, you have all those ray tracing that I'm not going to talk necessarily uh, today, uh, because for sure, if you're using ray tracing, you're going to lose a lot of FPS. But honestly, this game is amazing. All the parameters that you have for ray trace, you have a lot of different options. And you have the frame generation to back it up, so that's pretty good. So that's about it, guys, uh, for my uh, Ellen Wake 2 guide. If you have any question, just comment in the YouTube section, post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.